Throughout Native American history, one tribe stood out for their fierce and resilient spirit, the Comanche. Hailing from the Southern Plains, the Comanche have a reputation as the most warlike tribe in North America. Their skilled horsemanship, exceptional combat tactics, and unwavering determination made them a force to be reckoned with. In this video, we dive into the fascinating story of the Comanche, uncovering the stories of courage, victory, and the big mark they left on the history of the American West. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. The Comanche people, a Native American nation inhabiting the vast expanse of the Great Plains, once occupied a historic territory spanning present-day north-central Texas, eastern New Mexico, and southeastern Colorado, southwestern Kansas, western Oklahoma, and northern Chihuahua, Mexico. Their origins trace back to the early 1500s when they were a part of the eastern Shoshone tribe, residing near the upper reaches of the Platte River in eastern Wyoming. However, significant changes occurred when European settlers arrived on the scene. Acquiring horses through trade, the Comanche split from the Shoshone and their population grew to an estimated 10,000 members. Moving southward, they first settled in the Central Plains before continuing their migration further south, eventually establishing a territory that stretched from the Arkansas River to Central Texas. The Comanche population experienced a remarkable surge during their mi migration, fueled by the abundance of buffalo, the integration of Shoshone individuals, and the practice of kidnapping women and children from rival tribes, Mexican settlements. It is believed that as many as 20,000 people were taken captive during this time. Unfortunately, the treatment of these captives was harsh, the Comanche often considering them little more than slaves and commodities. Physically and mentally abused from the moment of capture until their release or demise, their lives were marred by suffering and hardship. The Comanche, though a sizable tribe, never coalesced into a single unified unit. Instead, they were divided into 8 to 12 independent groups. While sharing a common language and culture, internal conflicts occasionally rose between these bands, while at other times they cooperated in peaceful endeavors. The Comanche's autonym is Nimunu, meaning the human beings or the people. The earliest known use of the term Comanche dates to 1706 when the Comanche were reported by Spanish officials to be preparing to attack the far outlying Pueblo settlements in southern Colorado. The Spanish adopted the Ute name for the people, Kimansi, or enemy, and transliterated it into their own language phonetics. Before 1740, French explorers from the east sometimes used the name Paducah for the Comanche. It was already used for the Plains Apache. The Comanche language belongs to the Uto Aztecan language family, closely resembling that of the Shoshone, their ancestral group. The introduction of horses played a pivotal role in Comanche culture, as they are believed to have been the first among the Plains Indians to adopt equestrian practices. Initially, they led a nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle, but with horses, their ways became more audacious and aggressive, gaining a reputation as the finest buffalo hunters on the Plains. Horses also became an integral aspect of their culture, as they bred, stole, and traded them with other Plains Indians, bolstering their efficiency in buffalo hunting. Warfare held a significant importance in Comanche life, often leading to conflicts with neighboring tribes like the Apache. Their raids frequently involved theft, and those who fell victim often opted to buy back their stolen goods rather than engage in further confrontation. During the 1800s, the Comanche expanded their raids to include the theft of cattle by Texas settlers, which then they then resell in New Mexico. This period saw their confrontations with both Mexicans and white settlers, in addition to conflicts with many other Plains tribes. In an effort to halt the Apache raids, the Spanish extended assistance, but their endeavors proved futile, ultimately leading to the Apache's displacement from the Southern Plains by the mid-1800s. With the Apache gone, the Comanche rose to dominance in the Texas Panhandle, western Oklahoma, and northeastern New Mexico. Their equestrian prowess became so renowned that they began supplying horses to French and American traders. Historians often debate the validity of the Comanche's ferocious reputation 
contending that their actions were driven by a desire to reclaim what they considered their rightful land. Fiercely defending its territory, the formidable Comanche aggressively attacked the many settlers passing through on their way to the California gold rush. While some settlers lost their lives, most suffered the theft of their horses and cattle. The Comanche's strength and territorial control continued to expand until the outbreak of devastating diseases such as smallpox and cholera. By the 1870s, these diseases had greatly reduced the population to about 6,000 people. In the 1860s, efforts were initiated to relocate the Comanche to a reservation in Indian Territory, which is present-day Oklahoma. According to the Treaty of Medicine Lodge in 1867, the government provided them with churches, schools, and annual grants in exchange for a land area larger than 60,000 square miles. Additionally, the government pledged to put a halt to the rampant buffalo hunting, which was devastating the immense buffalo herds of the plains, on the condition that the Comanche, along with the Apache, Kiowa, Cheyenne, and Arapaho, agreed to relocate. The government's failure to fulfill its promise of protecting the buffalo herds led to the Comanche chief White Eagle launching an attack on a group of hunters in the Texas Panhandle of 1874. This encounter, known as the Second Battle of Adobe Walls, proved disastrous for the Comanche, and the army soon drove those who were remaining onto a reservation. In 1892, the government engaged in negotiations with the Comanche, Kiowa, and Apache, leading to the Jerome Agreement, which further reduced the reservation's land to 480,000 acres, with each individual receiving 168-acre allotments. Currently, the Comanche Nation comprises approximately 10,000 members, half of whom reside in Oklahoma, while others are scattered throughout Texas, California, and New Mexico. The annual powwow held in Lawton, Oklahoma, serves as a gathering point for Comanche from across the United States to celebrate and honor their heritage and culture. Economic Development The tribe operates its own housing authority and issues tri tribal vehicle tags. They have their own Department of Higher Education, primarily awarding scholarships and financial aid for members' college educations. They own 10 tribal smoke shops and four casinos. The Comanche Nation Casino in Lawton, Red River Casino in Duval, Oklahoma, Comanche Spur Casino in Elgin, Oklahoma, Comanche Star Casino in Walters, Oklahoma. The Comanche National Museum and Cultural Center in Lawton, Oklahoma has permanent and changing exhibitions on Comanche history and culture. It opened to the public in 2007. In 2002, the tribe founded the Comanche Nation College, a two-year tribal college in Lawton. It closed in 2017 because of problems with accreditation and funding. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.